Well, good morning. This is Joe Van Cleve, and today I'd like to talk about using these little 35mm film developing tanks as a makeshift rotary processing tank for paper negatives or Harman direct positive paper. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know that I've demonstrated this in the past, how you can take individual little uh, pieces of, for instance, Harman drug positive paper, and you can uh, put them in small cameras, expose them, and then develop them individually. And uh, that's what we're going to discuss today. As I've demonstrated in uh, previous videos, you can expose these individual sheets of Harman paper in Holga cameras, for instance, or even in uh, 35 millimeter cameras. Uh, what's important is that the camera has a, a bulb shutter mode button where you can uh, take a extended exposure, which you're going to need to do using the Harman paper because it's so slow. Now, if you have a dark room where you can lay out trays and you can process these individual pieces of paper, that's fine. But most of us don't have a dark room. I personally happen to be lucky enough to have one, but a lot of people don't. So you're going to have to come up with an alternative method to make it convenient enough to do. And um, what I've discovered is these 35 millimeter uh, stainless developing tanks that we can repurpose as a makeshift rotary processor. So instead of filling uh, the entire developing tank with chemistry as you would need to do if you were developing roll film, for instance, in this tank, right? Um, when you're using it as a makeshift rotary processor, all you do is take the Harman paper and you insert it into the gap between the outside of the reel and the inside of the tank, like that. And then, and you can put a couple of them in there, and then you only need to put in maybe about 100 milliliters of chemistry. And as the tank is on its side rotating, the uh, paper is going to be repeatedly immersed and taken out of the, the chemistry, and that's how it functions as a rotary processor. So it's very economical. Normally, um, film drums, like for instance like this, are intended to be placed on some kind of a rotary base uh, to, per to permit the tank to be rotated continuously while, it, while the uh, film or paper is processing. This is commonly done with large format sheet film. Um, the problem is you can buy a automated rotary processing system from Jobo, the German company, but it costs several thousand dollars. Alternatively, for around a hundred dollars or so, you can buy one of these manual bases that has these uh, uh, plastic rubbery rollers and the spacing between it is adjustable. There's a couple different types of wheels you get and you basically have to set it up for your individual tank and let it spin on the base. But these are, you know, anywhere between $75 and $100, these little rotary bases. So I'm interested um, in finding a way to make this method more accessible to the public, to you, and make it a lot less expensive. Hence my idea for a home-built manual rotary base. While I was at my local hardware store, I found these small uh, round caster wheels. And they have like three different kinds. Uh, one kind, the caster wheels swivel, which you don't want, and it's on a long shaft. The second kind, the caster wheels are on a square or rectangular base like these, but they also swivel, and that's not what you want. You want the third kind, like these, that are fixed on a base, they don't swivel, they just turn. Um, so I gathered together this uh, scrap piece of plywood from my workshop. I uh, spray painted it to make it kind of moisture resistant um, with whatever paint I had around the house. And then I drilled some holes in the base and with countersunk heads in the bottom, flathead sc machine screws. Um, so I first had to figure out how far apart to put the wheels. And what I did for that is I mounted the wheels temporarily using clamps on a spare piece of wood. 
and I was able to test different spacings this way and that way to get my tank to turn the smoothest. And once I had the optimal setup, I measured the distance between the holes, the screw holes, and figured out what that needed to be so I could reproduce it on my nice piece of wood. Um, so the holes in the wood were drilled to the same size as the machine screws, which I used 832 screws, which means I had to tap the holes but that meant that the screws, once they are threaded into the tapped holes, are going to be more secure because the bottom of it I've sealed up with hot glue gunning a piece of thick rubber matting on it so that it's water resistant and doesn't slip around on my countertop. Um, and then the uh, wheels are mounted using these nylock or nylon locking screws. So they're pretty secure and uh, pretty permanent, I hope. One thing I did notice, and if you want to do this, make sure you make note of this, is when I first bought these four wheels, two of them, I only noticed when I got home later, two of them, the wheels rolled kind of eccentrically, like the holes weren't molded or drilled in the, in the wheels properly. So I had to go out to the hardware store and, and trade them out for, for other wheels that did roll more uh, concentrically. The other thing is there's going to be a molding mark on the, on the middle of the tread, if you will, of the wheels. And you're going to want to uh, file those down so that the tank doesn't kind of wobble as it runs, but it's smoother. So in operation, um, this is a, a really neat little roller base, and I'll show you how it works here. Now, to use uh, the processing base with the tank, um, I'm just demonstrating it here in the kitchen. But you're going to want to, uh, of course, pour your chemistry in, your 100 or so milliliters of chemistry in, and then you're going to set it down onto the base such as this, and you want to rotate it relatively slowly and smoothly for the duration of your processing. For uh, harm and direct positive paper, I typically give it about three minutes. Um, and so it, it helps to develop a good hand technique uh, so you get a good consistent uh, uh, motion on it. And you can just continue like that. When you're done with your processing, you can pour your developer back in, do your, go to your next, uh, your next step, for instance, and just continue developing like that. I have the mouth of the tank um, sitting over the edge of the sink in case there's any sloshes, but with 100 milliliters of chemistry, you shouldn't have any problem. And of course I use a little digital timer that helps me to time the process accordingly. I wanted to show you some sample images of some of this little uh, small format direct positive print work that I've done in various cameras. Well first of all we'll start off with this little Kodak Duoflex 2 camera. It's a little uh, a medium format camera that took, um, I think it was 620 film, one of those formats that's no longer around. The important thing about these though is you got to make sure you have a bulb shutter setting and uh, this little one you just push the little um, button here on the back and the, back, the film back comes off like that. And the photo paper, you just got to measure the size of it, what you need, but it basically sits right in the film plane like that and you load it up in the darkroom or a changing bag, close it up, make sure the shutter is set to bulb, and then as long as you keep the button pressed, you'll, your, your shutter will be open. Um, again, I rate Harman Direct Positive Paper at an ISO of around uh, 7 or 8, and uh, I use a light meter to meter my exposure. you got to know the f-stop of your lens to get an accurate reading. Anyway, this is one example of, uh, this is a little yard ornament, a metal crow um, in my backyard, which is kind of a popular subject. So that's the Kodak Duoflex 2 with Harman Direct Positive Paper. So another popular camera to use for this purpose is the Holga GFN. This is Holga's plastic uh, bodied camera, but the GFN has a glass lens. Uh, but the, the thing about Holga is, of course, is they have the bulb shutter setting, right? So again, as long as the button is pressed down, the shutter will stay open. So in the Holgas, <laughs> and I use Velcro to keep the little clips on, in place because otherwise the back could fall off at any moment. But uh, So there's your back of your camera and you put your Harman Direct Positive Paper 
in there. You're just going to want to measure the exact size that you need. It just sits right in there like that and then you put the film back on and you'll be able to take one shot and reload it in your darkroom or your changing bag. Um, but this is an example. This is a picture, a self-portrait taken out of my uh, backyard garden um, with Harman Direct Positive Paper. This was about a two second exposure um, and it looks like kind of winterish kind of light, maybe partly cloudy daylight, but uh, that's kind of a nice little picture. So naturally it becomes uh, obvious that once you figure out you can load individual pieces of Harman paper in different cameras, you want to do it um, as much as you can to all the cameras you have. And this is a Yashica Mat LM, a medium format, 120 format camera, and let's see, I think you twist it like that to open it, but anyway you pop open the back, and again, you want to measure the size of paper you need, but it basically the paper slips right in there and you just close it up, load it up in your darker or changing bag. Um, and um, so this is a nice, nice camera, a very sharp lens. I happen to have an interest in taking pictures of empty chairs. It's kind of a long-term project of mine. The chairs kind of remind me of uh, the absence of people. And uh, so this is another great example of uh, how the Harman paper can make these one-of-a-kind little wonderful direct positive prints. So not to be outdone by its larger uh, sibling, Holga also makes a little 35 millimeter format uh, plastic camera. Works pretty much the same way as the 120 format. You have uh, a choice of two apertures, cloudy and sunny, and you have a uh, a bulb shutter or a one hundredth of a second shutter. So you put it on bulb, of course, and when you pop the back open, pull up that, pop the back open, you can put in your little individual clips of Harman Direct Positive Paper right inside the film gate, such as that. I found it helps to put a, a loop of uh, drafting tape on the pressure plate, and really it actually works better to stick the print the paper onto the pressure plate and then close the camera up. That way it stays centered. But this is another great example of a little uh, <laughs> uh, self-portrait, if you will, um, in tiny little size, like 35 millimeter slide sized little prints, but they're very cool. You can mat them over, mat them really big. Um, the way that you operate this camera, because the minimal focus distance on this camera is, you know, maybe within about three feet or so, is it has, fortunately, has a shutter release cable attachment to the shutter button. So you want to use a long shutter release cable, have your arm extended off camera with the cable and to do that self-portrait, which I've covered in another video, the one about Harman selfies. But that's another great thing you can do. Any old camera with a bulb shutter, you can make these little one-of-a-kind Harman pictures. So just as a reminder once again on this uh, processing system, these wheels cost me a total of under $12 retail. I think the whole project with scrap wood and spray paint and all that that I had around was less than $20 for a manually operated rotary base, rotary base for rotary processing these little paper positives in, a, in your own little tank. These development tanks are very inexpensive really compared to the fancy or plastic large format tanks. So I encourage you to uh, go out there and uh, start doing this. You can get this uh, Harman Direct Positive paper from Freestyle Photo, among other places. So uh, I'm just encouraging you to do this, and you have yourself a great day. Thank you.